on 11th March 2019, they were in their house on a Monday morning by around 6 o'clock. That's when they started hearing, uh, you know, shouts. So there were shouts calling on people to get out because the Fulani terrorists had already entered the village. By then, she was already pregnant, almost nine months uh, pregnant. So she attempted running to go and pick, uh, you know, uh, one of her daughters, uh, you know, to, to back her. Before she could come out, the other elderly child had already run out of the house. Her mother was already with them because they were scared away from yet another village where the, you know, the crisis had already taken place. She was blind, so she came to take refuge with her. So she was trying to alert the, the blind mother and other persons, but before she knew, the child had already run out. So as they were running, they heard the shouts of the terrorists shouting Allah Akubari, telling people to wait that they are going to finish them today. Now that she was already so, you know, uh, you are having an advanced pregnancy, she could not even run. When she tried to run, she just found she couldn't. As they were trying to escape, they saw all others, I mean, the terrorists and people who are also trying to escape, and people were shouting and asking, what have you done to you? That they were dressed in black and they tried to escape, but before they knew it, they had been surrounded in the village. Those who managed to escape were just, you know, by the grace of God. She was running with the child in her back and uh, the other child, then she was stopped. Some two people, you know, so, you know, blocked her way. So they came and met her with the two children. So they first of all, you know, uh, macheted the, the child and then they now came to her. They caught her, her hand twice. It was only the first one that she was conscious of. But after that, she became unconscious. Even the child that was on the back was also struck with a, you know, a cutlass. That her head, her face, you can see it, even at the back and behind her, it, they are all matched cuts. It's just by the grace of God that she survived. She regained consciousness, she was lying on the ground. They, you know, they must have finished their work. And the people came and they, she was begging for water. They said, no, she cannot be given water in that state. While the terrorists were operating, there was also a helicopter that was hovering above in the village. It would do as if it would land, but it would not land. It would just be hovering around. They continued their operation, shooting, killing, burning everywhere. When they finished their operation, they left, and that was the time that the helicopter also left. So after the people had left, then people were just searching to find, uh, to see the corpses and maybe survivors. When they came and met her, in her condition, they didn't even know how to carry her. So they had to get two sticks in which they now try to lay her so that they can now carry her. So with her nine months pregnancy, they used those uh, sticks to lay her and then evacuated her to a, you know, a shed under a mango tree. It was after that that the police came when the deed had already been done. Her mother-in-law, that is the mother of her husband, was killed in the process. The house was burned down. They couldn't carry a, a pin from the house. By the grace of her God, her own mother, who was blind, who could not even run, yes, they attacked her, they caught her in several places, but she survived the attack. But the others were not so lucky. So when she was eventually evacuated to St. Gerard's Hospital in Kaduna, where they amputated the hand and they were trying to stitch all the cuts on her body, in the process, she lost, uh, you know, the, the, the pregnancy. And it was discovered that it was a baby boy and he was supposed to be delivered in that very month. Now they are now living in a rented room in Kaduna because they are scared to go back there. But they don't just know how to survive in that. So when she recollects, you know, how her condition has become now, with no hand, even something to buy soap to wash her clothes, she cannot get. And she, you know, it really pains her that she has become like this.